Hey guys, what's going on? Alan here, the Gibson Garage YouTube channel again. I want to say thanks for tuning in and I also want to say thanks for all your support you guys have been giving me lately. I've been growing a little bit faster than usual, which is pretty awesome considering I've been getting away from like a lot of normal repairs and doing some of my own stuff. So that's pretty cool. You guys are interested in that. I appreciate that support, comments, the likes, all that stuff. Which, by the way, reminds me I am doing two polls on my YouTube webpage, my YouTube channel page. You hit the community tab and you can see all my posts. I've got two polls going on. Uh, one's for what project I should do next, like what fun project in between all of my crap that I have to fix. And also, what should be my first merchandise that I should sell. So go ahead and go over to my page, please, if you if you wouldn't mind. Cast a vote, because I have a total of 12 votes. And while, you know, yeah, that's enough to determine a winner, I want, I want more input than just 12 people out of like over 3,000 subscribers. So please, even if you're not a subscriber, just check it out. Let me know what you think. Yeah, and then thank you for that. So moving on to the car. If you were watching in the last video, you know uh, that I found that infamous clunk that I've had honestly for, I don't know, years, I think. It's been here for a while. I always thought it was uh, the uh, driveline carrier bearing. Driveline was flopping around. So I thought that's what the clunk is, but it wasn't. Uh, but now that I've got that fixed and suspension fixed and and everything else just completely taken care of except for motor mounts and the transmission mount those are that's what we're doing now so now essentially except for the headers and the BBK throttle body I have for this thing it, this car is going to be done um, so, but those videos of course will be different videos sort of coming out later but as far as the motor mounts go on this thing today I have no idea I haven't even looked at another YouTube video so I don't know what's the you know best way to do it or what other people had ran into I probably should but I'm not so I think the best thing to do is just uh, loosen all four bottom bolts two on each side and then either get your cherry picker in here or another jack with a piece of wood underneath and take the pressure off of those motor mounts and then we can remove the heat shields but then we can remove the main motor mount bolts and hopefully slip them out it doesn't look like there's a lot of room in here to even slip them out through the bottom definitely no room to slip them out top let's get started because it's only getting hotter So there's the heat shield. Okay. I got one actually from kind of reaching my hand up behind the rack and pinion. I got the one furthest back. The one on the front's just as easy to get to. Two-handed operation wrapped around the subframe. we lose that screw in the same spot the other one's lost okay okay slipping down okay so that was easy enough to slip out the back I don't think the motor mount is gonna come out that easy if you look up in there I don't know if you guys can see but there's a brace yeah right here that's bolted to the one mount so I gotta unbolt the brace from the mount and the other end of that brace at the alternator there's that brace goes from that end to that end we gotta remove that okay there's a 13 on a deep socket that wasn't right there it goes 
don't think I had it on all the way or something. That was weird. I'm going to loosen up the alternator end. Okay, that one's a 15. I'm okay. It's just a fingernail. Alright, now for these bottom 18s. Oh, -hoo. they're just going to come all the way out. Yep, okay, well, I was expecting just the nut to come off. That nut came off. More power. <laughs> Alright, so 15 deep socket for this one. I'm gonna use the other ratchet. I don't have the motor supported yet. Uh, I just want to see if I can break them loose. Yep. Okay. Yep. I got that one. At least I think I did. these ones you guys can see See, there's more room on this side to get this ratchet on there. Ooh. Excuse me, guys. Am I in the way? I mean... Jack under here. Okay. This bottom is off. I'm gonna finish <coughs> moving those bolts. I feel like there's a high sense of danger.
You try to jack the engine up a little more. I think that's it. Okay, so I reached up here with a little 10 mil, removed that bolt, reached over here on the cross member, removed that bolt for the power steering lines, just wiggled them out of the way, and this thing, oh, come on, oh. don't tell me I gotta remove the rack. I don't want to remove the rack. Oh. Oh yeah. There it is. Factory part number if you want to look that up. Remember this is two wheel drive. So that's going to make a difference. But it should be just two of these. We'll find out for sure when I get the other one off. So here's the trouble mount. Look at this thing. Oh well. Look at that. Unbelievable. Blown out. Don't drop it on your face. Like that, there's probably room a while ago. There we go. And this guy. Okay, a little higher. Hope don't break nothing. Yay! Yep, same part numbers. 0457806 Alpha Charlie. Well, these new motor mounts aren't going to work at all. Uh, <laughs> pay attention to what you're buying, guys. Um, wow, these are actually different heights even. So, first of all, check out this height difference from, well, first let's point out the obvious. Uh, these, these studs are longer than these studs, which they need to stick, they cannot stick past the base of this flange, which this is going to do, because then they'd run into the frame. I could cut those, but then, see this shoulder right here? That's like twice as thick as the brace that it's going up against, so the nuts aren't going to tighten all the way down, or they'll strip out half the nut on the way in, that's no bueno. 
second problem. He's like, well, I still got one good motor mount. Nope. This one's got these weird humps in here. So this rubber piece can't go in there. And I could carve it up to make it fit, but I shouldn't have to. And I don't want to. Look at this guy. So these are both no not gonna work. And then okay, and then that third not so obvious option that I just noticed. The distance here to here. Alright, and then check out this one. First of all, it's like these are made from two clearly two different manufacturers. We've got casting marks here on this one and not on this one, here and here. These weird square points, what's that about? Okay, well after about a four hour delay, waiting on parts that turned out to be wrong still, and then going to another store, I finally found a pair that have the short studs. So I don't have to cut them, I don't have to re-thread them deeper. But, they have those four humps. So what I did was just take a razor blade and trimmed out about an eighth inch. So this would fit on there without uh, causing, you know, undue, I don't know, preload or whatever, you know. I what I really didn't want to do was ruin this pad uh, because this is the part I'm keeping and this is the part that gets changed and serviced. Which, if these are only temporary because I got to go on a long road trip, but when they come in, I'm going to be doing a uh, solid mount conversion from uh well from another car i'm going to get rid of these hydraulic and put in solid mount so if you want to see that video hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and when it comes out you'll be one of the first people to watch it so check this out even though this one's not busted look how far collapsed it is it's like a finger width almost a half an inch i'd say we got the top lined up, but that's a pretty big difference. So I guess that's why you can't just do one. Your motor will be sitting sideways. Let's see if I can squeeze this back into the hole. Rotating is like I do. Not rotating. Not rotating. 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 That is substantially larger. There's still room to slide the bolts in though. Let's see. Just remember this front one is a double ended stud so we can brace up that alternator. Let's see if I can get these started while it's still loose. There we go. Just a couple threads. I'm going to keep the non-rusty ones over here on the non-rusty side. And then now that I got these started, I'll tighten the ones up to the block first with the 15 mil. Then I'll come down. Oh, and then I got to do the other side the same way. Get it just this far with the 15s tightened to the block. Then I can set the motor down. And this one's super simple. It just fell out. So hopefully, yeah, I'll just set it up right. Ow. Like that. Get the bolt started.
got to kind of hold it up and twist it in at the same time. Like this little... Yeah, that's enough to get a socket on it by hand. Be good enough. Okay. Down it comes. Right in the place. Okay, we're good. We'll cinch those four down now. <coughs> Don't forget the bracket to the alternator. The smaller hole goes to that double-ended stud on the block, and this hole goes to the alternator. It's gonna go in there just like that. Tighten those up and decide from the heat shields, which are just two 10 mil bolts for each side. I made a mess changing the oil. This job is done. Wow, look at the difference. This thing is above this now. This wasn't like that, no lie. This engine is easily sitting a half inch higher. It's pretty cool. And I guarantee the transmission's probably got quarter to a half inch to raise too once I replace that. But that'll be another video that I'll, will be in the video when I do the solid mount conversion. So again, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, hit the like button if you liked it, leave a comment if you wanna leave a comment. And as always, have a good one. I'll see you guys in the next one. Owie, I need some water. Owie. Ow, that one got me on the noggin. Whoa, heads up. Wow. I think I got a bit of a power steering leak, huh? We'll just cover that up. Hmm. I'm sure that'll last just fine on a long road trip.